shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's how we're going to start the podcast. Yeah. All right, guys. Shut the fuck up. Cheers. All right. Shut up. Let's go. You recording? I don't have anywhere to put my thing. You don't have a, um, what's it connected to? <laughs> oh, a table over here. You literally have a table next to you. Yeah, but it. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's rock. Right, Rob, cool. what's up? What's Gabe, up? Gabe, Kelsey. Nothing much. You're on Why camera. do you guys look so tired like you did something this weekend? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we're getting old. Well, at least I am. No, Not I Gabe. am too. That's how time works. <laughs> so we're getting prepped for this, and Gabe's like, what are we talking about? I said, skating, dude. <laughs> like, what Obviously. else are we going to do on the, <laughs> the SC podcast? I mean, that's all we do, right? All we do is skate. That's it. That's all we do is mm. skate. Hey, Holly. <laughs> We, we're, uh, we got a full uh, house here today for some reason. We turned a, a party into a podcast. That's how it usually goes. That's uh, skate life. Finish up the weekend, some roller skating, <laughs> good meat. Dude, you guys see some of these kids play pickleball? Are they, are they not good? Like epically bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that so many speed skaters can only just be good at speed skating? Well, no, most, no that's not true. Like, speed skaters are athletes for yeah. the most part. Like, Zach was dunking a basketball. I didn't know Zach could do that. Yeah, Zach can hoop. Yeah. Adrian could play a little bit of pickleball. He's not bad. But yeah. I don't know. J- Jamie, <laughs> that took a little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, you guys, let's just jump into this. Um, we haven't had a chance to catch up since nationals. We're sitting with uh, our men and women's grand champion. We've been wanting to interview him forever. Every time we try to set this up, it's just too chaotic with all the breakdown, and then we're all super tired. So we figured we would do the podcast after having a super long meet. Yeah. You've been working me to the bone. Two days in a row, up at 4.30 in the morning. It's kind of bullshit, honestly, dude. But, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm still kicking. But, uh, I mean, I guess I can't complain because they both raced all weekend. So, you guys skated awesome. But I guess we'll just dive into Dude, uh, and they were fast this weekend, huh? Well, I got Gabe at an 8.20 today. <laughs> Let's start it off with that. 8.20. <laughs> I really, really, really wanted to see an 8.1. Dude, I- but 8, 8.20 is, like, not terrible. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so we were at um, – we just laid plastic at the rink. Um, I got to give you a little bit of backstory on this. It was kind of a weird nightmare, and luckily it worked out. So uh, we've always used a Sika product. It's called uh, WP8. It's, it's the product that we've used at uh, – had our floor forever, and the meat's coming around the corner, and we go to order plastic, and I get the call from Kelly Springer, and he says, we got uh, a big problem. Oh, no. I said, what? He said, yeah, uh, Sika's no longer making the WP8 product, and this is like less than like two weeks ago. So I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to have to tell everybody that we don't have plastic oh, no. for the rink, and so we were freaking out a little bit. Kelly's buddies with the rep at Sika, he says, hey, I, I have a friend who's in the business. They don't do any speed skating stuff, but like he really knows uh, his stuff. Call him. Let's see what he can work out. <clears throat> so we call this dude up. Um, shout out to uh, Rob Zender. This guy's amazing. He came in, doesn't really know anything about speed skating, but knew way too much about flooring. And he says, hey, I, I know what to do to make this hook up so <clears throat> me and, and Gabe's dad and this guy Rob lay the plastic <clears throat> and then we're holding our breath for the first practice like oh my god like what if it doesn't okay. work and so uh, I could tell kind of on warm-up that it was looking pretty sticky and uh, for whatever reason I don't know these guys always like to run laps at the end of practice of course uh, They're crazy did uh, Todd clocked them at, at what was it a 8.18 uh, yeah, 818, right? But Gabe said, should I post it? I said, no, dude, no one's going to believe you. It was hand clocked. Well, yeah. I mean, but I was able to time it watching it. But I just pulled out a stopwatch, and I just timed from cone to cone. And I got any, everywhere from like a 815 to like a whatever, like an 821. Of course, I'm watching it through video, and I have my stopwatch. But yeah, dude. And then I kept timing it. More times than not, it was 81, 815, 818. Yeah. That's but you were looking at the watchdog when he ran the A2, right? Yeah, watchdog like, That's said the it. laser. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Eight, that's what 8. I thought. 8.20. Yeah, so, so Gabe's all super pumped about this, and he's like, he's like, I'm, gonna, I'm like, dude, don't 
post it. Like that's like, you know, when you're, when you remember when you're a kid and your, your coach would tell you the super fast lap times and they'd go super early on, on the trigger. And I was like, dude, don't say anything. And then we were supposed to have enough time to run the flying hundred. Cause I knew both of you guys were going to run ridiculous times. Luckily, uh, the three person, we actually got some real watchdog times in eight, eight point two zero. It's the fastest recorded time officially. Like, have you guys, do you mm-hmm. know any time? I mean, what did Jonathan run that one? A couple 8. years. 8.28. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So yeah. insane. And that was, I mean, granted, that was a one lap. It was, it was one lap time trial. Um, I think that was maybe the second lap of three. And I don't, I don't remember yeah, what, what it time it was. Second lap. Yeah, really impressive. And plus, it was the end of the meet, too. So at that point, I'm sure you were a little oh, bit fatigued. Exhausting. Right. Yeah. Dude, so you, were so, really so you got to tell us what you were thinking because you heard that time. Dude, I, I came around the corner. I just started clapping. I was like, let's go. <laughs> you were cheering during the race. I'm like, hey, wait, you still got a race. race. Yeah. Well, you're, you're Ron's got that on, on video, so we'll have to show that in the podcast. I've never seen anyone clap for themselves in a race before. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might be the first to ever do that. Well, one of your teammates rubbed his hands during the relay. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he rubbed his hands and and he smacked his partner's butt cheeks so hard before he before he tagged them. I'm like, what's going on? Was it Adrian? Yeah, Julian did it. it was to Adrian. Adrian. He said, Oh wait, no, no, it was Julian and Adrian. Yeah, Julian. Yeah, Julian slapped Adrian's. Oh my god. Yeah, it was good. It was fantastic, and it was still a good relay tag. Oh know? yeah, worked out well. Adrian had a little more pep in his step for whatever reason. It was good. Kelsey, <laughs> what have you been doing since your grand champion win? Um, chilling. Uh, got a new job. Yeah. So I've been working with that. Uh, also helping Patty coach. Nice. So any, trying any to up get and, training. Any up, up-and-comers that you are got your eye on that, uh, that'll be challenging you guys anytime soon? Um, probably uh, Gabby Pasquarella. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for yeah. sure. She's going to come up. Yeah. yeah. Gabby's, of course. Like, what else would you expect from, from them? The Pasquarellas, yeah, and for sure. <laughs> If we can get uh, convince Cheska to start skating again, she actually came out and did all of our photography. So um, if you guys get a chance, check out her pictures. They're awesome. We've been posting them from NSC too. So pretty cool. You uh, got a bruised ankle. Huh? Your ankle is bruised. Doesn't that hurt? No, it's just cold. <laughs> that is bruised. <laughs> oh, that one poor kid, I think. Uh, no, he's okay. No, he was not okay. He wasn't? No. No, they, he was in a sling. No, I'm talking about I'm the, the dude's uh, foot that fell at the end. Yeah, the one I dragged off the track? Yeah. <laughs> well, they dragged him to the hospital. They did? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Wow. I mean, he couldn't put any pressure on it, and it was lumped up. His ankle was lumped oh. up. So I, I, I don't know. That. I mean, I don't know what happened, but I feel bad for him. Yeah. Was it a little kid? No. Uh, it was like third like, senior relay. Yeah, he was an older mm-hmm. guy, but he fell right. It was the three-person draws? Yes. Right oh, at wow. the three-person draws. He crashed, and then he was in the worst place you could be. And, like, no one was helping him, so I just grabbed him and drove him well, over to the bench. And like, the, the poor like kid, war. the first thing that he said was, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, because he was in the way, and he was like, I can't move. I can't move. My ankle. He's like, bro, it, you're fine. Don't Once worry Once I got him to the bench, though, he's like, oh, I think I'm good. I don't know. His <laughs> Put ankle, some Robitussin on it. His ankle. Rub it in. Yeah, his ankle uh, didn't look too good. It was pretty swollen. Oh, my gosh. We'll see. Well, anyway, so, all right, well, that's good to hear it's not a bruise yeah. on your ankle. So what's, what's the new job? What do you, uh, I work for T-Mobile. Nice. You don't say. Sales? <laughs> yes. Nice. Do you know we're colleagues? Really? Mm-hmm. I'm a T-Mobile employee. Since when? I got, oh, we don't need to go down this rabbit hole, but my position was eliminated at Matillion. I was doing software sales. So I ended up taking a strategic enterprise role mm. at T-Mobile. I'm in week five. We'll have nice. to talk some shop after this show. Nice. So she might be your boss. Might be. One day. <laughs> I don't know. But nobody on this learning. podcast wants to hear about 5G private networks. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll, keep it, we'll keep it skating talk. Fastest speed. That's right. Yeah. Well, let, let's catch up on, on nationals because it's, uh, you know, God, when, when did we run our NSC? Dude, last NSC was July 17th, my July birthday. July 17th. Wow. July, so you got to get a big win on your birthday. Yeah. Nice payday. Won, uh, I think, both endurance races and then came out and won the grand champion race. Nice. She didn't even buy a round of drinks or nothing. How much did you make? You're okay. supposed to buy me drinks. That's true. How That's much fair. did you make? Uh, I don't remember. I think about 1300 <laughs> Didn't even buy us a drink. <laughs> no, it's like in golf. If you get a hole in one... Hey, you I, gotta you gotta buy the drinks. I put that towards worlds. I gave that to Patty and she deals <laughs> with all that, so I don't spend it. 
Fair oh enough. Oh my gosh, yeah. Skating is too expensive. Huh? Oh yeah, for sure. But you know what? We have all these kids um, on our team and I'll say to the parents, uh, you know, everyone comments on skating being expensive and they're like, oh, you got to see this sport or that sport. The other day, actually, I was um, texting Sean Patterson and he said, uh, he was telling me about his son, Will, um, doing really well in hockey. And he says, if I ever hear a parent complain about how expensive speed skating is, he's like, you don't even want to know for, for hockey. And, oh, geez. And I think about that too. Like my daughter's... Um, Soccer is significantly more expensive than skating. The equipment's expensive for skating, but like once you start skating, like almost everyone's uh, skating dues are cheaper than gym memberships, right? Oh, like, yeah. like what are your guys' skating dues? Forty. Forty? Don't tell anybody on our team. No, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're lucky if we get two practices a week. We're oh, lucky. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our situation, it's it's a bit of a challenge. We don't have like we have set times, but we get bumped for parties and stuff like that. So. Yeah, we just, uh, we're a brand new team, so we just started rolling out dues this past month. Yeah. And uh, we agreed to 40 bucks with Damn. the owner. So, that's yeah. awesome, though. That's so, but that's, that's so inexpensive. It's, it's good. Oh, so on the flip side of that, uh, uh, one of the kids on our team went to an ice practice. They get one hour a week, maybe that's two. expensive. For one hour, guess how much? Like $250? For, per person, though. Oh, okay. $80. Eighty dollars every time you skate. Yes, every time you skate. So if they grow the team, I think maybe the dues will go down. But they're like, okay, we had ten people show up today and are charging us whatever three hundred plus an hour, yeah. or maybe even more, and then they they split it up. So you better have damn yeah. Huh. So number one, you better be rolling in dough. But number two, I don't know how you can get really really good at one hour a week. I, I don't know, mm. you know. So that's. Yeah. Puts it in perspective, I mean, though, that... technical stuff maybe can work. Yeah, and they do dry land, and they do some, like, outdoor inline stuff focusing on, with, like, ice technique, but, but you still... Can't get, you can't get good at, oh, at, no. at anything without, like, I having know. available access. I mean, That's the part yeah. that, like, you know, where I always will say, you know, when you're comparing inliners and ice skaters, you're like, well, the reason inliners have such a good success going over to ice is because they have such a better base. Like, if you start on ice skating, like what he's saying, you're like, okay, well, I, I skate twice a week, where even if you don't have normal practice, if you live in a place with decent weather, you just put your skates on and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, for you guys here, I mean, you guys have so many good guys that you could just get together at practice and just race each other for an hour or two, and you're just you're going to get better. You know what I mean? At least I think so. Yeah. So it's like something that... But it puts it in perspective about the cost of our sport versus others. Yeah, like 40 bucks a month is, is not a lot. Mm. I donate to our gym every month. Yeah, because you don't go. No. I don't, <laughs> I don't go. I'm like, oh, $100, another $100 came out of my, uh, you know, my checking account. And it's just one of those things that... That's how they get you. They make you do the subscription fee. Yeah. And then next thing you know... Dude, I got a mirror in my garage. I got it for Holly for Christmas. I'm like... I, you never use that thing, but oh. I haven't canceled it. And it's like two <laughs> years in. It's really Holly, cool. Are you hearing this? <laughs> but I like my live classes. Oh, Why I get that you work, a mirror. That workout mirror thing? Yeah, like, dude, That's it's like cool. it's like um, like a Peloton, except it's for all kinds of classes. Everybody in this room needs to get Zwift. I'm not a spokesperson for Zwift. Oh, you keep you asking me to. You got to get it. You got to get it. Get on a group rides. Gabe. Or skate. No, Gabe, you're not getting <laughs> Swift. Dude. You're not gonna you're not gonna make me look bad on Swift. I'm not racing. <laughs> no, you. I probably Gabe be out there. Ha, 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 ha. Average I like three hundred watts so. for three hours. What's that? I said I love cycling, so Yeah. It's just lift. I don't really bike that much. It's just all lifting. Gabe tells really? he, Gabe tells these guys that he doesn't train. Uh, Julian I think Julian no, as Adrian told me, he's like, Yeah, we went over to Gabe's house the other day. We were like looking through the window. He's just slamming weights down. They just caught him in the middle of a workout. They're like, all he does is just work out. It's all he does. I go to work. I come home and work out and then go to practice, go to sleep, and then repeat it. Yeah, real athlete. So that's interesting. So like your weight training, do you go in cycles or phases? Or are you doing strength and then like whatever? Well, pretty much all I'm doing is strength and explosiveness. So I, I work on both aspects at the same time, squats, snatches, clean and jerk. Mm -hmm. all three lifts and i do it in a rotation so interesting <laughs> dude you know he lifts a lot for like how clean that came out <laughs> right oh yeah oh you know just squats and snatch and jerks all right i'll put you on the spot what are you squatting 
Well, my max is 400, but right now I'm like 153, so like around 380. Oh, your weight. Yeah. Yeah. So when uh, when I was like 160, I was squatting 140, but right now, yeah, I weigh a lot less than I did back in when I won my medal. I was squatting 400. Dang. Uh, yeah. So do you have a race weight that you know that you want to be at to be? Well, right at now your best? my race weight has got to be this 130 or 153 is flying yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm light enough that I can just take the corners and not have to worry about anything. Yeah. It you, definitely makes a difference indoor, especially. Mm-hmm. Kelsey, are you a similar regiment? Yeah. What's, what's like a typical week look like for training? Mm, it just all varies with my work schedule, basically. Um, I do cycling uh, two or three times a week. If I can't get outside, I'm on the trainer. And then twice a week with gym. And then when I can get to indoor practices. Yeah. Not doing much outdoor unless I have to. Weather or just because you don't want to skate outdoors right now? Correct. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We get so sick of indoors by the time summer comes around. We're like, yeah, outdoors. Oh, yeah, and we sure. get like two months of yeah, it. Yeah, you guys get a solid month to skate outside of Dude, here. but it's a nice month though, dude. It I'm is nice. It's such a nice month. It is. I can't say much because in Pittsburgh, we, I mean, it's always overcast and cold and I think Pittsburgh ranks up there with like most days without sun. I think Seattle's probably close to the top of days without sun, like overcast. But yeah, so we're not in much better shape in Pittsburgh. But we probably get like two months. You get like one month. Yeah. Oh, we get a few months. Yeah, we get a few. It's been nice. It was oh, like yeah. 90 degrees when I left on Friday from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Come out here to this ice box. Yeah. <laughs> It's not that bad. We were just playing pickleball. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I was freezing out there. Oh, you yeah, were? Same. Yeah. Well, it was cold. You weren't playing. No, I you know. Guys, I'm just you, standing there You guys freezing. were spectators. Yeah. Kelsey, freezing. it's interesting. Uh, you mentioned about outdoor. I thought outdoor was like your jazz. Like, you prefer outdoor. No, well, this year I'm focusing more on having fun for indoor. Okay. Not really training for outdoor nationals this year. Just going to help the kids when I can. Like Erica, Piper, Kenna, just help them with whatever they need outdoor when I, when I can. Nice. I mean, you guys were cooking. Like, it looked like you guys were on ice. I swear you could have pivoted if you wanted to going around the corners. Trying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw you and Michaela going to one corner. I was just like, hold my breath. Like, oh, my God. I don't know how you guys didn't bark out or fall or... It's the wheels. The wheels are great. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to know why y'all paced like the first three and a half laps of that five. What was going on there? I was waiting for someone to go. I didn't want to go. I can't, I can't, I can't sprint that it's long. It's like, Kelsey, I'm getting old. go. Michaela, maybe you can maybe give it a try Michaela here. To or go. do you give her running out of time? I pass up, but I was like, okay, two and a half laps. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Would you guys, um, I think people probably want to hear this because uh, people always come to the booth and then they're asking me, what wheels should I put on? Should I put on the black? Should I put on the greens? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I wear blacks, but then, you know, Gabe mixes and then so-and-so does this. Like, what is your guys' preference? Like, what are you, what are you on right now? Um, I'm on a mixture of greens and blacks. I like, I don't like too much grip. I like a little bit of slip, but also a little bit of roll. So I like to mix it up. Four and four, like two, yeah. two? Yeah. Blacks on the outside and greens on the inside. I mean, when I was running the times that I did today, I had one green in the front, one black, and then two greens, both skates. Hey, one green he had and six a f- greens on. He had a black oh. on the on the on the. I, I second, don't know what right? it is. I didn't have any slippage at all. It felt like I was wearing a full set of black wheels, but with roll. Dang. Well, hopefully, it's this new plastic that's just making it hook up. Oh, the floor new. felt super fast. It was so good. I was jealous watching. Looks fun. <laughs> we both sat out. Yeah, looked like a lot of fun. Plus, you're, I mean, you're super light too, so that probably helps. Yeah. Everyone kept asking me, like, my oh, fat you're... ass be barking every corner, probably. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, everyone kept asking me, like, oh, why aren't you skating? I, I had the best excuse. I was like, oh, we, we, we got a lot of beginners on our team, so I can't. I'm out of shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's the <laughs> I was excuse. Like, I'm not skating. Do you really have a lot of beginners? Yeah, we do have a lot of beginners. That's a good thing. I make Gabe coach. Mm-hmm. He helps me with a lot of practice, and my son doesn't listen to him at all, <laughs> or me, Henny, or any of the dang no. coaches. Henny, it's, Henny's the man. Mm-hmm. Dude, he's a problem. Yeah. Four years old, is out there just getting after it. He was. That was, that was cool. Can't get him to not jump, though. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Who taught him to start? Brandon Hall? Dude, <laughs> listen. Sorry, Brandon. Probably. Pro- probably. Mark, set. Yeah, just Definitely going. Brandon. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Rizzy, I'm just kidding. I'm staying at his house. Don't let him see this before I get home. <laughs> Doors will be locked. Change the locks on me. Hey, I'm curious, though, about your wheel setup. So you said you wear on your left. Is your left and right the same? Yeah, they're the exact same. So, so say that again. One green. In the uh, front. One black, and then two greens on the back. On the two. So why, why do you put the black wheel in the second spot? I don't know. I just decided to try it, and then it ended up working. If you think about it, I mean, that's like the ball under the ball of your foot, yeah. right? So you're getting applying a lot of pressure Probably there. Probably like more power from it. Because that's something that always gets brought up. They're like, where, you know, if I want to put the hard wheels, where do I put them? Oftentimes they'll say just put the hard wheels in the middle. So was, I was curious on, you know, on that. Some do like, they'll put on the left, they'll put a, a, a soft wheel like on the toe, on the heel of the right, they'll put the soft wheel. And then you hear, oh, you know, you got to, you always get taught like, oh, you need to push from your heels, but that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I no. never understood that. No. Like you need to push off your heel. Like Franklin, remember Franklin when he first started skating, he legit thought like he would step in his, he would, he, he, he would like. Well, they teach you that. Yeah. You go like this. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? When we were, so. And, and then me, he got really fast. Me course. and him are obviously dinosaurs. Like my first, um, my first inline nationals was the first inline nationals. It was 1992. Jeez, and I wasn't we, even born. we skated on. He wasn't um, even in the womb yet. In 92. Were we on 72 millimeter wheels? Is that what we were on? I was skating on quads in 92, man. I, I skated it. Well, because that was the first year they did. You weren't even, you didn't even transition yet in 92. You were still on quads? Yeah. So I did we both. had, I we did had both. a funky year where there was a year period of time where they let you race inlines against quads. Oh, yeah. Like people argued, like, nah, quads are faster. And you're like, no, they're not. But. Imagine if it, like, if it was like um, Dante and Tony Muse who are like obnoxiously good on quads and then anyone who was like a beginner was like, I'm going to try this inline thing. So it's like world champion versus beginner on inline. So it almost made it look like inlines weren't as fast. Um, anyways, getting to my whole point, when we were figuring this all out, there was no history. Everyone had to just guess it. So people really thought, like with inlines, like you had to push off of your heels. Coaches used to take the front wheels yep. off of the skaters of the kids to make sure that they would balance in a way so they'd have to push off of uh, their heels. And this was like big in California. Like if, if you see some of the older California skaters, they'll push like so much with their heel because when they were kids, their coaches would take the front wheels off. And then it just kept evolving. And, and as the skaters got better, it just turned into, well... How'd you go fast? Like Jeremy Anderson's like, he created a technique. Like there was no technique. There was no one to teach him. He just like, I don't know, it works. And, and then it just kept evolving and evolving. It's pretty crazy. The hammer and husky. The hammer and husky. Mm -hmm. That guy was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> pretty good. I don't know. I, Nicole gives me a hard time because I'm like, dude, hammer and husky might be the best indoor speed skater of all time. You know, you, you, think? you can make an argument. She thinks I sweat him too hard. <laughs> <laughs> she does, she's not even arguing with you. She's like, dude, just stop jocking him. <laughs> I'll be in the mirror. I'll be looking in the mirror trying to get that little lean with that little hip he has going in. <laughs> I'm like, Jeremy, how do you step in like that? Well, this is brutal. So uh, Jeremy has such an iconic photo that Ron replaced the Mantia photo with the Jeremy photo. And guess Actually, what? Is there... It's, on, it's behind yeah. us. Guess what? <laughs> I was looking, uh, the ice speed skating team I was telling you about in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I was looking. I'm like, wait a minute. I know that picture. They're using that picture. And they just they put freaking us? ice blades on it. Uh, they, better, sure. they better pay us. I might be wrong. <laughs> I, think it, I think so. Oh, you can uh, tell the not. difference from ice and inline. Like Once you see an inline picture, like that's inline. I'm, I think that might be it. That's I'll funny. look while we're doing this. Don't mind me. Anyways. Yeah, um, yeah so um, you got in town... What was it? Thursday? Friday? Thursday. You're supposed to come mm -hmm. hang out with us at practice. Uh, I She's was Hollywood, so tired. dude. She's Hollywood. She She's practice. I felt so old. <laughs> <laughs> I was so tired. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't really sleep the night before. I was too excited oh. to come out here. That's not it then, is it? That ain't it. That's uh, a, that's a, I don't even know what that is. Nah, never mind. Your story sucks, it bro. It sucks, dude. I'm lying on camera. God, we caught you. I'm going to put that picture up. It doesn't even look anything like it. Ron, find that picture. Show how bad this guy's story is. It's not that odd. Uh, it ain't good. Dude, that's Jeremy. That ain't Jeremy. I don't know who that is. That's me. That's a guy. That's a... Yeah, right. I don't bet my knees down. Rob, much. I don't think no. you get that low. Jeez. You're did right. Did you guys know he used to skate? Yeah. You guys what? did? Yeah, yeah, he used to skate. No, I was, I'm kidding. I know. 
Me? <laughs> Dude, you got a key to the ring? Yeah. After this show, we'll go square up. <laughs> Dude, he skated our floor once. And uh, we were doing some relay. I don't even remember what it was. It was like one lap tags. This fucker beat me in a one lap tag. And, he went, and then he like didn't do the next drill and he just retired. I've had no redemption. <laughs> this is terrible. He beat me on my own floor in a one lap drill. It's the greatest moment of my legs. life. <laughs> greatest moment of my speed skating career. I did my skates in bronze after that. You guys all catch that? I beat this guy on his home turf. First time ever skating on the floor, too. And I was out the night before, you know, threw a couple uh, sarsaparillas back, you know, a couple cocktails, and uh, showed up. Like, it wasn't even hard, actually. That was, I thought it would be like, a tough, <laughs> be like a tough race. Actually, it was, like, pretty easy. I'm so, sure you got, like, a John Mueller tag, and I, and I got Lucas' his son pushing me and made it really fair. Maybe, maybe. I'm totally kidding. Oh. It, was, it was a pretty hard one-lapper, but I did win. So we got to figure out, um, obviously this year has been super weird with, you know, last year we just handpicked everybody and we, well, I shouldn't say we handpicked them. We looked at all the big invitationals and really picked who I felt was the highest quality group of skaters for us when we're picking the NSE athletes for nationals. It's, it's not whether you can skate with the group because there's a ton of people that could technically skate with the oh, group. For sure. mm -hmm. It's like how many of those people have an opportunity to win, right? And, and sprints is really interesting because if you can win a 300, you might make it in the NSC, even though you might get blown out in a 500 because we're looking for the, the people that can win. Um, this year is a little bit funky because I feel like a lot of the meets were spread out, like you skipped Orlando. Mm -hmm. And so we got to start having that conversation about yep. who we're throwing in there. Um, and then, you know, you get a lot of guys that jump in and out out of nowhere, right? Like I saw the other day, uh, Harry Vogel was um, posting pictures of him skating and everyone laughs until I don't ever laugh because anytime that dude says he's going to do something, next right. thing you know, two months later, all of a sudden he's 155 pounds and fast. It's, it's, it's crazy. Just he wait. transforms so fast. <laughs> yeah, he does. He? he transforms so fast. It's like he'll drop 30 pounds and be in race shape in a couple months. So if he was like, hey, I want to race nationals, I wouldn't want to race him. Yeah. Like, Low-key, he might be there. What's yeah. that? Low-key, he might be there. I know. Low key. Don't he's, tell anybody. Just us here in the room. <laughs> if he, I think but here's blue the thing. Bubble. If he Spit shows bubble. up, he's a guy who only show up if he believes he can win. Yeah. He's like that. Well, he says he just you know, wants to do it for fun. Mm -hmm. Dude, um, but you I get that killer. You you know who has the killer instinct? Like he has that like killer instinct in him when he yeah. races. Yeah, you know he's good. Yeah, he. Is I saw uh, really Jessica good. Smith with her skates on. Did you see that? Yep. Those one twenty fives. Uh huh. <laughs> she still looked like she could skate too. Right? I was like, why does she still look good? Yep, she's fit. She looks pretty fit. Yeah. I don't know who who are you guys? I mean, like if you just said right now, Gabe, if you were like, you don't want to lose your black suit, your. You're, you're going, you're stepping on the line. Who are guys that you'd be like, I'm a little nervous to race them. I'm not saying that, that, that you're saying they can beat you, but who are some guys that you're like, I got to take them serious, like top three. Definitely right now, Matthew Fortner. Mm -hmm. yes. I saw him over yes. in Orlando. He's doing great. Yeah. Crazy. God, I really want to race him. Didn't he lap the pack multiple times? In Almost the... twice. Oh, okay. Or maybe twice. I think so. Yeah. Dang. Damn. All the North Carolina guys, uh, I'm not to... Um, I know you have other names, but all the North Carolina guys came back this back. year. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. They have so, a strong group over there. They do have They're a doing strong good. Group. Yeah. yeah. I anyway. mean, and, and Jacob's a good gauge because mm -hmm. he's been kind of their representative for a while because they lost such a big part of their group. And when I talked to Cheeks, he's like, dude, every practice, he's, I asked him the other day, I'm like, who's your best guy? He's like, I don't know, dude. He says it switches up all the time at practice. And uh, I've been trying to pressure him to be like, dude, put your kids on my wheels. He's like, He's like, dude, they're, they're all swapping wheels every practice. I'm like, dude, I, I promise you they work. Quick plug, and, and you guys can probably attest to this. I think the biggest challenge when we're trying to get people on our wheels isn't whether or not they think our wheels work. We've proven that now. Like, it's been years now. We, we've, we are the most consistent company. Every batch of wheels feels like the batch before. Mm -hmm. And we have had so many people win on our wheels. The challenge is once you skate on a different brand's wheels, that profile is so radically different that when you come to our profile, it takes a while to adjust. And I still remember the first time we were on them, 
and you you were nervous and I was nervous. Like I think Brandon mm-hmm. Hall was the only one who liked him, and me and you were looking at each other like, I don't know. I didn't even think we were going to be able to use him. So. Yeah, it was weird. So, yeah. anyways, I've been pressuring cheeks to to get his guys on him, and they're on everything. They're, they're on everything. They are. Yeah. It's it's they'll they'll be a good indicator uh, once they figure out what they're what they're going to be on. Yeah, um, definitely. Plus, I think they still use roll on. So mm. uh, okay. All right, so two, but, two more guys because he hasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so we got one out. Hmm. Jacob Melton, he's okay. doing oh, amazing yes. right now. Yeah. Did you see him over in Germany? Yeah, I did. I watched. He's fast. So he's, amazing. He won twice. He won the Dobbin Sprint and he won the he's 500. He's fast. Yeah. yeah, he is. But you know what? He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't really give you guys a run for your money. You just think he's improved that much, huh? I think he's improved. Mm-hmm. He's fast. I mean, it's, you can be really good at indoor and you can be really good at outdoor, but. I think that he could cross over. Yeah. How old is He's, How old is he now? Do we know? 16, 16, 17. Yeah. 16, so every 17. year for him is exponential growth. Right. Right. Because right. now he's getting stronger. I'm sure. I mean, I I watched the videos. He is flying. He's and fast. he slices through those corners there like nothing. So obviously, that will transition into indoor. So that's a good one. That's a good. That's a good mm-hmm. name. Give us number three, Junior Pascarella. Okay. He's always in there. Mm-hmm. When's he, he not? You know what I like about this is that Gabe mentions three names and every single one of those fast kids in NSC. Like, Tanner's probably sitting on the couch right now going, really, bro? <laughs> well, I, I didn't see like, Tanner at any meets. Uh, no, I'm just saying in general, right? But this is, this is what I like Weird about this, right? Like, Jamie's over here going, dude, I just raced you this, <laughs> I just raced you this morning, Gabe. You ain't going to say my name. Well, I trained with him. I know how fast he is. He's racing with me. Yeah. <laughs> but I love, I love that. Kelsey, how about you? He's my teammate um obviously jazzy we're always back and forth yeah every competition um mckenzie robinson for sure um and i would say gabby pascarella yeah i'd love she's to convince strong. i'd love to Nicole, convince Corey. This? oh yeah if I'd Corey and Corey. aaron I mean, show up yeah for sure yeah um if aaron just had one extra day and just flew in earlier yeah because like i could tell the last nsc was like every race was like Oh, she's starting to figure it out. She just didn't get enough time. Yeah. And that, that uh, when you get really comfortable with your eye stuff, it just takes some time, huh? Yeah. Well, that's why I think they even tell them during the season to not do any inline stuff. Am I right? Like, if they're on ice, I think that's really hard to go back and forth. The short trackers, yeah. The long trackers, they, they do both. Like, Mantia still is on that little treadmill. Yeah, but they're doing ice. I mean, they're doing um, ice technique on inlines. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He... So. He kind of abandoned the, I'm going to try to make a double push work. It just doesn't. Yeah. I wonder what he's going to do. I haven't really talked to him. Um, I know he's still, he took the year off. He, wants to, he wants to do more inline stuff. You know, I talked to him, not yesterday. No, maybe it was yesterday. I can't do, we've been up since 4.30 the last two days. I remember it was yesterday before, but uh, probably going to do some inline camps. Um, so, you know, if this is a, if, if anybody's listening from another country, uh, Mantia wants to go wants to go do some some clinics and if you're listening in the United States, uh, reach out to him because I, I think he wants to teach. He wants to give back and I would love to see him work with the the U.S. team a lot more. I'd love to see him work with with Gabe. There's just some things that mm. he can contribute um, that not very many people in the world can. It's very true. He does a really good job at simplifying things when he explains it. So I, he's a good teacher. Yeah, for sure. So, um, no, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious or I'm interested about NSC this year. I know we haven't had one yet since Nationals last year. So I know we were kind of talking about that a little bit, but it's going to be exciting. I feel like now Nationals last year was, was bigger. I'm hoping this year it's even bigger. And then we get, we get more people there. We get more talent there. I don't know, dude. I mean, what are you thinking about NSC this year? Are you – I'm excited. We're for doing it, it right? Yeah, Nationals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, Nationals. Do, we're doing it. This is an early promo for it. We already got the green light. Um, Ricky reached out and said that she wants us to, to do it again. Um, last year, we were really nervous. I mean, me and Ron spent two weeks laying out the dang event, kind of just freaking out, like, because <laughs> previous to that, it was so long. Like, we didn't even know if we knew how to do it anymore. And yeah. then Ron went nuts. Like, he was like, oh, dude, every event has to be better. I come in here, he's like, check out this new camera. Check out this board I got. Check out this. I'm like, dude, do we have enough people to man all the equipment you just bought? 
Um, but no, I mean, you know, shout out to the NSC crew. We got, we got the best, we got the best team in speed skating. My opinion, we got one of the best teams period, you know, with Thomas and you and Brandon and Kelly and Ron and Robin and you name it. Like we just been so fortunate to, to have such an amazing team and everybody contributes like, yeah, I, I, I love it. I think people have no idea how much work goes into it, especially, Gosh. And yeah, we keep on trying to improve and getting new toys and making it, you know, making the production better. But you guys don't see behind the scenes when this guy, I mean, he might as well just be whipping me over the back, man. <laughs> Bam, with a bamboo stick. He's like, dang it, Rob. You got to start pronouncing your S's better. Dang it. Damn it, Rob. What are you? <laughs> but then, uh, but then, you know what? You, you've gotten, you get, for, there was a few years, you know, Miguel was tough because, you know, it's your baby. You wanted yeah. to make it a, a great, great production. But that's, uh, you softened up a little bit, so that's Dude, good. that was brutal, huh? He was brutal for a but little while. But you know what? Um, we've built the reputation. You've built your reputation. We were all in the learning phases, and it had to be, like, perfect. And it's impossible to be perfect. So I was, dude, you should see, you know what? You think I'm bad? Ron's bad. Ron? Yeah, like, timing's off by, like, a second. He threw something. I'm like, dude, like, no one noticed. I noticed. <laughs> like, chill, dude. Like, it's, it's going to be... Okay, like we've had amazing events, and then like he felt like he didn't have his timing down enough, and it's just Ron's yeah. a perfectionist. So like he abuses me, then I abuse you. So I thought we lost Ron to Columbia years ago when we had the event in Columbia. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we lost Ron to Columbia, but you came back. That was good. I'm like, what's going to happen to Ron? Ron's going to move down, or he was looking at houses, dude. Just one way <laughs> trip. He wasn't coming back. Um, we would have the N we would have a Columbia NSE every year. I'm then. throwing this out into the world now. Let's hope it happens this, there's none of this is uh, even remotely close to having uh, any validity yet but uh, johanna has been working really hard at indoor world championships and uh, i talked to him about it a lot my goal is if at some point they actually pull this off and do indoor world championships we just want to be the promotion company behind it like let us we don't want to be the refs we don't want to do any technical aspects but let us just put on the show like how cool would that be for you guys to like skate a real Oh, that indoor. would be awesome. That would just hype everybody up. Wouldn't that be yeah. nice? Yeah. That would be amazing. So, I mean, it sounds like it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't um, know if I'm going to be able to announce that. I'm probably not going to be skating yeah, you're gonna, when it happens. I'm racing. You're going to mess up. No, that's not your issue. Your issue is you're going to be looking at the names. I'm going to be like, Rob, just do what you did today. <laughs> green, right, team, green team, black team, <laughs> red team. <laughs> Robin sent me the entries for the meet because I wanted to get familiar with the names. I took one look. It's just like, through the like, paper. I'm like, I don't know how to pronounce these names. But then you mispronounce a name and then people get mad. You know, they're like, hey, my, you know, and I want to get it right. I feel bad. I, I really, oh. it, that's like a pet peeve of mine when I say a name wrong. But how the heck do I know, you know? So I just got to, sometimes like, if I'm saying the team name a lot, it's probably because... I'm worried I'm gonna mispronounce their name. Uh, you're lucky, dude. My mom would have. My mom would have got you because the first five years I skated, it, if I ever placed, it's like Miguel Josie. Miguel my Josie. mom's <laughs> like it's Jose. <laughs> Miguel Josie. <laughs> my mom would have came and had a good talk. She, she would. She would have got me. No, but I'm gonna race the first indoor worlds actually. Yeah, I think they are doing like a veteran kidding. Kidding. worlds or something. Or no, Esquire? Esquire? Esquire. Yeah, they're going to do an Esquire. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that's for you, Rob. <laughs> yeah, it is for Rob. <laughs> Better take it easy there, Kelsey. You're catching up. Yeah, you be Just you, kidding. Casey, uh, maybe Carter in a year. Give yeah. me like two or three more years. I'll be there with you guys. Carter's older than me. Is he? Yeah. He acts younger than me. Yeah. He's, still, he's still out living. Carter's, you, you know. can't keep up with Carter. No, nobody can keep up with Carter. Ever. Don't even think about trying. Gabe's never Gabe. experienced it. In a year when you're old enough to party with Carter, you'll get your first lesson. You yeah. cannot keep up with Carter. Cannot keep up with Carter. Nobody can. I've yet to see somebody keep up with him. Yeah. I've done pretty well. I could hold my own. But when you start getting into like days two and three. Yeah. He won't and sleep and then he'll still perform. He'll like, still be racing and performing. This dude, yeah. Carter was such a good sprinter. So, um, we used to have pro at indoor nationals and it was like a real pro division. The very first year I skated it, I want to say that there was 60 entries, but you had to, um, 
either be on the world team or be a national medalist to be pro. So you couldn't just sign up. There's actually like, mm -hmm. like I remember the heat, I looked over and there was like six or seven people online and there wasn't a single person online that wasn't a national champion, right? It was insane. And what did it go from, was it sophomore or junior? I think it was first year, junior and up. Anyways, point of the story is they used to do a standing uh, 100 meter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely my worst race. I'm so bad at that. I can't do a standing 100 if my life depended on it. I can only go from 50 to 100. I can't go from... Carter's coming around the corner on his, and he's always like the main guy. It was like him, Ben Carey, like who's, who's like... Uh, when in, Keith was still yeah, Keith, there's like towards the end. Three Keith or four Turner. guys that can win the race. Carter's coming yes. around the corner. He barks out, and his body gets turned, he just rotates and he hawks backwards. So his whole body's turned around and he hawks backwards across the line. He beat me by like three tenths. Oh my in God. In a standing hundred. <laughs> Mind you, I think I placed that year in uh, the 1500. So it wasn't like I was bad. <laughs> That's how good of a sprinter Carter was in his heyday. Well, like you guys have only seen him at, at like 40 something years old sprint. Like that well, was a Yeah, gene. and Carter in the 100, he was either. And it was still probably saying true today if it was a standing 100. He's either going to win or he's going to get last because yeah. he, I guarantee you, he, there will be no hesitation that full one lap. He will cross in, and if he makes it, he makes it, and he'll have a really fast time. If not, he'll either fall or do a backwards 360 and hawk and get probably sixth or seventh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, like, so we don't drag this on uh, too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I want to ask you to um, – a cool question. Um, if there was anything on the racing side you would change in NSC, what would it be? Like a distance, a, a new event, the way that we're calling, uh, you know, any rule changes? Like what's something from the athlete's perspective that you guys think we could do better for NSC to improve it? Mm, well, you got all those distances right. I like those yeah, eight lappers, 13. Yeah, 13. The distances flat. are okay. <laughs> I mean, there's not, like, much time in between, but I like to race back-to-back because -back I can just keep going. So, I mean, not much. No, I, I can't Everything's think perfect. of anything. Everything's yeah. perfect. Oh, this is great. You know, you know what Tanner's thinking right now? <laughs> He's like, you know what you guys should do? Call blocks. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, that's what makes oh. racing interesting. No, uh, we've been picking on Gay because, like, right after he won the Grand Champions race, I'm getting it. I got a text from Cheeks, like, immediately, like, so you guys don't call blocks anymore? I was like, well, technically Tanner passed him. So, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't get the ref anyways. I'm just on the sideline. Like, I, I don't make any of the decisions. Is it that one where uh, he passed and then went really far out? And then you cornered? Oh, yeah. yeah I, I no, I, I didn't that. even know he was coming. I saw him, and then I moved out of the way. And then he went right by me and just went right out. <laughs> Have we ever thought about like an instant replay type thing? For that, yeah, for yeah, Tom? yeah. I want to do an instant replay super bad. If, uh, and, but the, the challenge with doing the instant replay is that you can't just go, I'm going to do an instant replay and then not have the, the appropriate equipment, right? Because right. you guys know very well that from one angle, skating looks completely different. Yeah. So if you're going to instant replay, you have to have enough equipment and enough cameras to know with certainty that yeah. you're able to see that. Now, the other challenge that you have is production-wise, um, you only have, you know, a, a maybe a two-and-a-half-hour allocated time frame to do the event. And so you'd, right. have to, you'd have to really think that through. Like, if someone was able to challenge and go to an instant replay, like, imagine racing the Grand Champions race and someone actually has, like, a technicality where they overturn the ref. Like, are you guys going to run that back-to-back? -back? Like, yeah, it's yeah let's go. It's yeah. tough. It's brutal, right? It's tough. Yeah. I'm curious with you guys because you, NSC is a big part of, well, I guess I could just ask that question uh, as far as like goals this year and what you're looking to accomplish. I think you're both on track right now to do some really good things this year. Um, I saw that this weekend and throughout the year, but is there a goal that you have in mind, uh, specific races, whether it's NSC, whether it's making team this year, Worlds, any races coming up? Gabe, we'll start with you, I guess. Well, I want to keep that black suit, for one. But no, I was, after this weekend, I really, like, I know it's a tough goal, but I really want to try and be the first person to get into the sevens. If that, if that can happen. Dude, that's... You'll, love, uh, you'll, love, you'll love this, Gabe. You'll I love, love this. So, 
my my daughter has this outrageous goal. Like she asked me, like, Dad, how fast does Gabe go? So I told her. And then she's like, has anyone ever uh, gone in the sevens before? And I said, no. And she says, I'm going to be the first one. Oh. So every nice. uh, practice, she'll ask me, like, has Gabe gone in the sevens yet? And I'm like, not yet. And she's like, whew. Like, <laughs> she's like super concerned you're going to hit seven before she ever gets to, to seven, which is hilarious. Granted, she's probably at like 11 or 12 right now. So we, we got some ways <laughs> to go to to do. for her to get into the sevens, but I think it's hilarious. But it's that's how it starts. Have. Like, mm-hmm. um, Jeremy's group was the first ones ever to go into 45s in the 500. Okay. So like, keep in mind, like sevens sounds outrageous, but when inlines first came out, like 46 was stupid fast. Then it went 45. 45 was unheard of. We skipped 45 and dropped down to 43. And then when it got down to 42, we were like, oh, my God, we're getting close to ice times. And so, you know, we'll keep working on our side to keep, you know, uh, pressing the technology. But right now, even with the current technology, I think it is possible to, to get into like a 799, like, there, people, someone might have already done it. We just didn't know and ever had it clocked. Maybe like during a race when you're chasing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there's a possibility it's happened, but I want to see it clocked. Yeah, I'll just do it on a, like an 80 meter track. Yeah. So nobody sure. needs to know. Nobody needs to know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think if it's a track you're going to do it on, it's here. I mean, yeah. so that's cool. Yeah. I thought you know, about one thing, and I'll run this past you guys. I think. Uh, specifically for the sprinters, and so I guess you guys aren't the best people to ask, but. I was thinking about in a 300 meter, the cone distance versus the wall distance to get to the first cone. The wall distance is probably further to actually get there. Like if you were to measure that out, if you just took a tape ruler and said, okay, you're, you're lane one, I'm going to measure it to cone. And then if you're wall, I'm going to measure it. What do you think about actually offsetting the start positions in the exact distance measurement so it's more fair? I was thinking about that the other day, Rob. Sorry. Are you like checking your, we're born Rob. He, he's over here on Instagram. I had a very important message I had to attend it to. Did, oh yeah. It's uh, it's T-Mobile call and tell you you're fired. <laughs> Maybe. They're going to look at this so podcast this and be is, like. So this is what I was telling them. In a sprint race, I think the cone has a significant advantage on the wall. And I think specifically they do because I think the distance is actually further from wall to cone. What do you think about offsetting each lane, the exact measurements? Interesting. The only thing I can't figure out is what if you just cut over instantly like and cheat. But I'm trying to figure out more ways oh, to no. make it fair. Like that was one of the reasons why we did the um, automated start. Because I think like you guys that saw this thing. weekend. Did you see how inconsistent the start gun oh, is? Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. It drives <laughs> me crazy because the, the goal isn't to trick anybody. The goal is to make sure that everyone goes at the same time. So... A lot of people don't know this, but we actually send the audio file out to all the NSC oh, athletes yeah. so that they can practice. Their, and their there's never been more jumps ever. And, since and that. which is the craziest thing because you literally have the nerves. audio file. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. Is it nerves? Oh, I'll ask, I'll ask it you. definitely is. is it? Oh yeah. Because you yeah. know you it doesn't change. Line. Yeah, money on the line makes you nervous. Right. Hey, with that last NSC, I came out with a lot of money it, but that's just <laughs> that's just because just i kept flexing gave him by, he didn't buy he didn't give me a nice little dinner little steak at the sizzler nothing mm-hmm. so far uh gabe told us he went eight two and made a lot of money yeah <laughs> skating's hey, dope i'm sorry i'm just stating facts at this point <laughs> yeah that's true oh uh, well that's true. um we'll leave it at that um, i have one but, more question oh, go ahead because I got uh, Gabe, uh, but your goals this year, we talked a little okay. bit about like what you, what, what's going on, new job, but is it an NSC for you this year? What are you looking forward to? What's the goals as we uh, kind of well, get through 2023? Keeping the bl- black suit for sure. Okay. And like it. Because I won't be skating next year. I'll be more coaching than skating. Really, though? I, I, I promise. We've all said it. No, don't promise. We don't, we don't want to see you stop skating. Dude, so. I think I said that last month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. basically, yeah, NSC grand champion for sure. Love it. And if you win it this time, you're not going to carry yeah, it into next year. You can't. You just, can't. I mean, I'll probably I won't train for it. I'll just come back and you know <laughs> mess around with the just with, mix it in with all the. You say that until you, you're carrying that black suit. You don't want to lose it once you have it. Yep, that's I know. Every that's what I that's why I always force uh, all these guys to to race like like. Zach raced and uh, Julian and Adrian because they race once and then they're like, 
oh, I'm going to start training again. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Well, and the thing, and we'll wrap up. I know we got to get going, but it's hard to win one of those things. It's hard. It's hella hard to win one. It's hard to win one, and then it's even harder. Well, maybe not even harder, but to try to hold on to it because now you got a big X on your back, and everybody's coming for it, and everybody wants it, and you're defending that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've already heard some of the kiddos saying they want that black suit this year. Love it. I love it. So Awesome. Well, hey, uh, we'll, we'll uh, see you, all of you guys at uh, Nationals, and um, hopefully we all can get together and, and uh, do some more media before then. But if not, uh, we're looking forward to putting on a, a super kick-ass event. And, uh, yeah, maybe we can throw some newcomers in there to, to challenge uh, these guys. Some, I think so. At some point, the crown's got to get taken, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, this. heck, even think a couple <laughs> years ago when Gabe was up and coming, you know, like, you were up until a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. How Ad many? Uh, Adrian was the man. Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Adrian and Brandon. Adri how, many, how many black suits does Adrian have? Three. 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 Yeah. He's over here remembering his something. glory days. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling he might be back, though. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. He's shaking his head. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is he shaking his head up and down or this way? He's like, oh, I don't know. All oh, right, okay. guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Right. Have Thanks. a good one.